Hi, I'm Hera Walkholder, licensed mental health counselor. And I'm William Barney, a mental health counselor. And we are from the Bougainvillea House. Today we're talking about understanding anxiety in children and teens. Anxiety presents itself in so many ways that there's not just one way to say, hey, someone is anxious or hey, that I'm anxious. Um, sometimes it even appears in ways that we ourselves don't even understand. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, someone that appears angry might actually be masking their anxiety. A lot of times society feels more comfortable expressing anger rather than saying, I feel anxious, frightened, fearful, terrified, scared. Irritable, sweaty palms, um, overthinking things, uh, sometimes even afraid to go into some places where maybe expectations are really being placed upon us. All of, the, all of these things can definitely be forms of, of anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, sharing anxiety is one of the best ways of actually fighting it because anxiety is just thinking about what will happen as opposed to what's currently happening at that time. Absolutely. Anxiety is future-based. It's nothing that has happened yet. It's actually nothing that we have control over. So being more aware of your present will definitely help. Uh, something that is misunderstood about anxiety because it gets a bad reputation is that anxiety is actually really good for us. It's what gets us out of bed in the morning to go to school, to go to work, to accomplish our goals and our tasks for the day. If we weren't anxious, we wouldn't study for that test. We wouldn't apply to college. We wouldn't get up out of bed to do anything. Too much anxiety, however, can be really overwhelming and a lot of anxiety is taking place within the mind, so you're not going to easily see that in someone. Whether they're overanalyzing, overthinking something that's going on or about to occur, we only see it once it becomes a somatic symptom like a stomach ache, a headache, um, a back ache, uh, a cold, a flu. Headaches, tremors, pretty much almost anything. The key to fighting anxiety is to just to keep yourself in the present. Remember. The past is history, the future is mystery. That's why we take what we have today and it's called the present. That's why we focus so much on grounding techniques and mm -hmm. making sure that you are able to stay in that moment. Because who knows what's going to happen? Maybe you'll win the lotto. Or who knows, maybe you will get a bad grade on a test. But you know what? It's not, it hasn't yet to happen. So instead, focus more on what's happening here and now of what you can control as opposed to what's yet to happen. Absolutely. I think a big thing to talk about with anxiety when it involves children and teens is social anxiety. We may not realize how often a child or teen walks into a social situation that seems very comfortable and normal, and yet it completely overwhelms them. Just showing up the first day at a new school can, can absolutely torment and terrify a child. So as Will was saying, it, one of the best things that you could do is to share your anxiety and to not keep it in that just leads us to, to build up inside like a volcano and we eventually erupt without having any sense of control. It's really crucial to identify who we can talk to. Is there a favorite teacher? Is there a friend? Is the guidance counselor someone that you feel that you connect with? Or seeking professional guidance with a therapist like one of us. Exactly. Um, also, coping skills. Um, just like with anything else, you have to find a way to cope with these feelings because let's keep in mind that anxiety, it's uncontrollable. You can't exactly help it. And if you see someone maybe is a little bit anxious, the worst thing to always say is, oh, what is there to be anxious about? Or, hey, calm down. It's not something that you can really control or that that person can control. Instead, try to help them stay in a moment. Try to help them cope. Breathing techniques uh, throughout the day, if you can. Journal, meditation. Any of these things can definitely help to mm -hmm. kind of bring you back into the present and to help you get throughout the rest of the day. Taking time to be in nature is also really helpful. You know, meditation also gets this this negative um, outlook because people feel there's one particular way to meditate. Just taking time to be on your own and to process your emotions and your thoughts throughout the day is a meditation. So teaching children and teens to take that time to better understand what's going on with them is really important. Exactly. Um, also, remember, if you're ever feeling anxious, like Hera said before, communicate. No one's a mind reader. And sometimes we may not really want to talk about it, but when you do, you'll typically find that these things tend to feel a lot better once you get it out and you're able to process it. 
So just keep in mind, guys, cope, keep yourself grounded, and most importantly, don't let the future dictate what's happening in the present. Absolutely.